So this is the first clinical trial to uh, test whether rafamil um, can have beneficial effects in patients with new onset type 1 diabetes. Uh, Rafamil is a calcium channel blocker and used as a, a blood pressure medication for many years, but it's also been used for uh, other things such as migraine headaches. Um, we have previously shown that Rafamil can uh, prevent diabetes in mice and even uh, reverse diabetes, overt diabetes, uh, suggesting that it may have beneficial effects in humans as well. In this uh, first trial, we will uh, recruit uh, patients 19 to 45 years of age that have been diagnosed with uh, type 1 diabetes within the last three months. And while continuing to uh, receive insulin treatment with their insulin pump, they will be randomized to receive either placebo or rapamil for one year. Um, we will uh, measure their um, ability to produce insulin and their blood sugar control as well as their C-peptide response to a mixed meal as an indirect measure of their own functional beta cell mass. Unlike most type 1 diabetes trials, it does not include the use of any immunosuppressive or immune modulatory uh, medications, which often have very severe side effects. Uh, rather, it is based on a well-known uh, blood pressure medication that has been used for 30 years, uh, Rafamil, and therefore is unlikely to have any of, of those uh, um, side effects. Uh, it is also uh, targeting the patient's own beta cell mass and insulin production, so it's very different from any therapy that is currently available for diabetes. And finally, it is actually backed by um, a lot of uh, strong mechanistic data in different mouse models as well as in human islets that suggest that this approach should work and also knowing the mechanisms behind it. We initially discovered TICSNP in a microarray study using human islets, and we found it to be uh, very strongly upregulated by glucose. We then went on to show that diabetes also induces TICSNP expression in, in beta cells, and that TICSNP promotes diabetes associated beta cell death or apoptosis. Um, with that in mind, uh, we studied deletion of TICSNP, genetic deletion models of TICSNP, and were able to show that uh, those mice were completely protected against both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. We and others have shown that uh, TICSNP deficiency or inhibition of TICSNP have beneficial effects in other organ systems affected by diabetes, such as the heart, the kidney, and the eye. Most recently, we found that um, TICSNP also regulates uh, beta cell function and insulin production, and that the inhibition of TICSNP actually promotes insulin production. So we, even a small amount of surviving cells, when TICSNP is inhibited, uh, would be able to produce more insulin than with a higher level of TICSNP. Once we've shown that genetic deletion of TICSNP can uh, prevent diabetes, we obviously were interested in finding a pharmacological tool that we could use to inhibit TICSNP because uh, obviously when patients come to the clinic, they typically have already the diagnosis uh, or have already the symptoms of diabetes and we don't catch them before they develop diabetes, so preventing um, the disease would not necessarily be an option for humans. We wanted to have the ability to reverse the disease rather than to prevent it. Um, we therefore stu started studying different compounds and found that calcium channel blockers and especially Rafmil was capable of inhibiting beta cell TICSNP and uh, went on to uh, do um, in vivo studies in mice with it. We first confirmed what we had seen with the genetic deletion models um, demonstrating that oral administration of Rafamil was able to prevent diabetes. But then we went on and 
took it one step further and tested mice that had already developed a wart diabetes with blood sugar levels over 300 milligrams per deciliter and started the varacmal treatment only at that point and found uh, that, again, uh, varacmal was capable of uh, reversing the diabetes and those mice became uh, normal glycemic. And the reason for that was that they were able to uh, maintain functional beta cell mass and the beta cells were able to survive. Well, it obviously would be great if we would see the same thing, namely reversal of the diabetes or significant reduction in the insulin requirements of the patients receiving varacmal in this trial. We uh, don't expect necessarily such a dramatic effect, especially not in a study that is uh, that short with only one year duration. We don't expect a complete reversal of the disease or any uh, significant effect like that. However, it has been established that even a small uh, increase in the patient's own uh, beta cell mass and function can have dramatic beneficial effects in terms of outcome, blood sugar control, and also long-term complications. And this is most likely due to the fact that um, our own beta cells are much more able to respond adequately to very fine uh, um, fluctuations in insulin demand, much more so than would be possible with insulin injections or even with the insulin pump. Being a true, truly comprehensive diabetes center uh, made the study even possible, and that's uh, due to the fact that we closely collaborate uh, bench researchers as well as uh, clinic physicians. Um, and so obviously that, that is a, a great plus. In addition, we're able to draw from the resources offered uh, by the uh, Center for Clinical and Translational Science, or CCTS. And then um, even more importantly, we have a very active ongoing collaboration with the Alabama Drug Discovery Alliance and Southern Research Institute, and are in the midst of a drug development program to um, develop new small molecule uh, sp highly specific TixNIP inhibitors. And so with, with uh, the background that we have with the previous molecular studies and this clinical trial, we're hoping that once again we'll be able to make the translation from the bench to the bedside.